Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to Jamie Photography. So in this video, I'm going to take you through um, some specific points related to uh, the color point control with the new upgraded Lightroom that we have, show you how we can use that to balance light and shade. I'm also going to take some really quite tricky images taken in the early hours of the morning this past weekend, um, where we've got very bright lights and we've got a lot of contrast and try to balance the image as you can see here to a final image. So this is this is Stratford upon Avon in England and uh, this is the River Avon that runs through there. This is about 3.45, something like that in the morning. Uh, best time if you want to have the place to yourself, get up nice and early. Um, got a nice sky, nice clear sky so we can see the stars. So the original image, let me just take you back, we had a, a high exposure image of 30 seconds uh, shot here and then we had a 8 second exposure at f8 shot here. And what we're going to need to do is work with both these images to create a bit of an HDR. We're also going to have to look at the reflections in the water and the sky to look at the stars to make sure we've got single points. And as you can see there in this image, they're single point, whereas in this 30 second image, they're slightly dragged because the world is obviously turning. And also you'll see in the original image, there's some swans down in the bottom right corner that are moving around. So we need to bring that and that together to create our final image, get that sort of sharpness, make it pop, get the contrast and the balance of color. And I can show you, show you how we do that. So if you'd like to follow along, then the two original raw images are in a link down below. Feel free to download those and, and follow along. All I ask is that you respect my copyright, so should you uh, reshare this image anywhere on their social media, I please ask that you would um, give credit to myself, uh, at Jamie R. Mathlin. That would be very good. If you like what I'm doing here on YouTube, then um, please click like. And uh, if you've got comments, questions, or tips, I'd love to read them. Pop them down in the comments below. And if you haven't already subscribed, it would be really good for you to... Uh, to join me here on YouTube and uh, have as much fun as I'm having. Okay, let's get started. Now these images are, are quite challenging, shot very high contrast at night. As you can see, this is eight seconds at F8, ISO 1600, and the second image I shot was 30 seconds F8, ISO 1600, um, to try to make sure I get under the shadows, you know, bright, the bright and the really dark areas. But of course, the main lights are completely blown out. So we're going to need to do a combination of the, the, the first and second image to try to keep the contrast levels uh, correct. And uh, that means we're going to have to use HDR. But before we, we progress to that, the, the one thing we do need to do, one of my favorite functions that we have nowadays with Lightroom is the denoise function. We do need to denoise this because if I zoom in here, just let that clear, uh, let's get in a bit closer and you can really see. So we're at 200%, let's go to 300%. And you can see the noise here in the sky. So um, still very good levels of noise. It's grainy, um, but it, it, it is still uh, not too bad. But we can improve that. And, and if I um, if I select both images here, so you can see if I've got one image selected, I can hold down the shift key, select the second image. So I've got two images selected. I can then click on denoise, and denoise module will open. And what we can do is we can select the amount of denoise that we want here. So in the case of this, there's a quite a bit of noise here because the ISO 1600. So I'm going to go to 60%. It reckons it's going to take about 20 seconds to do this. And uh, we could click Create Stack, and that would put the original images behind the new noise corrected images. But I'm going to keep them separate so we can always do a comparison. And then I'm just going to click Enhance to Images. And so what it's going to start to do now is, is going to process both images. And as it gets to the end of processing number one, it will switch the image over to number two, and then it will, will carry on working on that image itself. So we'll leave it at this level here. They are, we've swapped over to number two, so uh, it's, it's now, there's the grain. You can see how much noise there is there. We'll move it to the same, same position as we were before. So quite a lot of noise there, and then it's complete. But hey, look at that. Isn't that incredible? It's really reduced the noise down. Now, we can add a little bit noise re more noise reduction here. We can always take the luminance slider if we really want to try to get rid of the every last little bit of noise. So I can just add in here about 15% on the on the, the luminance. That helps a little bit. Um, and then I'm just going to bring the sharpening up 
to about 66 just to keep it nice and sharp and I'm just going to go to masking now when you slide the masking tool which is giving you the balance between the noise correction and the sharpening you can hold down the alt key uh, option on Mac and you can then pull this slider whilst holding that key down and as you go across what you'll see is the black is what gets the noise um, correction and the white is what gets the sharpening so if I don't go far enough you'll see that we have white showing in the sky which is, means that it's going to try to sharpen objects in the sky so the best thing to do is just move it to the right until the majority of the background noise is, is taken away and then when you let go you'll see that you get the noise correction and the sharpening uh, and it works extremely well now one thing you will notice between these two images being this is 30 seconds although it's 32 millimeters um, you are getting a dragging of the, of the stars here in the sky the world just keeps turning so um, you are going to get a bit of a drag there whereas in the eight second uh, image you can see that there's only ever so slight bit of dragging there so I can still see a bit of noise so I'm going to do the same with this shot here I'm just going to bring up the masking to about 20% on this one bring up the uh, bring up the sharpening go to the masking hold down the option or alt key and just slide that across until we don't see the background in the sky there we go and now we've got uh, a, a really good noise controlled image there so we haven't done anything else other than noise correction so I think the next step to do is I want to bring the the brightness up a little bit and bring down the highlights open up the shadows uh, before we go into the HDR just to make sure that we, we we're happy so I'm just going to bring the highlights down here pretty well all the way I'm going to open up the, the shadows again almost all the way about 80 percent there uh, make sure that we've got that I'm just going to bring the brightness up a, a little bit as well we're just going to come up probably half a stop just on the brightness so that we've got something to play with there I'm also going to bring this bridge level as you can see the whole image is not level at the moment we can do that by going to the crop tool and selecting the little angle you can see it here the little angle spirit level if you like take the top of the wall of the bridge here click and hold and take the top of the wall of the bridge over here and it will straighten the image so that the bridge is completely horizontal which is what we want what we want to do you can see that 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 uh, large tower in the background is leaning to one side and in fact it does lean so i'm not going to correct that whilst i'm in the crop tool i'm just going to bring this over slightly from the edge there um just to take out the, the sort of edge of this bridge because it's not complete and it, it will just um sort of disturb the edge of the image and over this side i can see there's a couple of swans there there's a swan down here which are a little bit blurred but we can sort those out in photoshop a little bit later um, I think I'm going to go with that but what I do need to do is check over here next to the padlock make sure um, it, you can see the padlocks unlock I'm going to click on custom and then I'm going to select uh, a wider aspect as a sort of standard aspect so I'm going to go with 1610 first there we go that brings it down 169 would be narrower still um, so we could try 169 just to see if it gives us more of a pano sort of look uh, which it does quite like that so do I go 16.9 or 16.10? Obviously, it's made it smaller now because uh, we moved in. So we can re reposition the crop back to where we were. I just want the edge of the bridge in on that shot there. So I'm going to go with the 16.10 crop to such. I'm going to hit return. So we've got the level. We've got the, 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 the highlights and the, the low lights there. Just going to check my whites, my blacks and my whites. Now, you can down, hold down the option or alt key and then move the slider to see where where you know move it up you see the white light is um, effectively bleeds through and you'll notice there if i if i go up to the histogram you'll see there's a triangle up there if i click on that triangram diagram triangle it will highlight it and what it will do is it will show you where you are clipping effectively you're going past the data of the actual image and this is going to be a difficult one because of course the lights are very bright but what I'm going to do with the whites is bring the white slider down until I can't see. There we go. Just so I can't see them. And I'm still holding down the option or alt key there. So I'm going to let go of that now. And you'll see that the little triangle up in that squared box has not is not illuminated any longer. If I move the white up, it will move through different colors. And then it will go. There's blue. And there's, there's magenta there. And then white. And that's saying that we are clipping. And again, if I click on it, you can see the areas that we're clipping so we don't want to clip 
we want all the data usable. So I'm just going to bring that back so we've got no clipping. And there you can see we're just touching the blue on the clipping there. So that's OK. We're right at the very limits. And we can do the same with the blacks. We can hold down the option or alt key for the blacks and we can move that down. You can see where the blacks are. The further down I go, the more blacks we get. But we don't want to, we, we really don't want to be cropping too much into the darkness here because it is, after all, uh, a very high contrast shot. So I'm just going to bring it just to the edge there. And you can see again, if I click on there to highlight the blue. You can see that there's blue here and there's blue here. That means that we've got absolute black. That's as far as you can go. So if I bring that black up just a little bit, I can move it away from the blue. Just there we go. And, and then there's no there's no clipping there at all. So I'm a little tiny bit of black. So I'm just going to bring that back into the clipping into the blue. There we go. And I'm quite happy with that. Now, ideally, I want to take these these same uh, settings across to the second image here. OK, I've still got the, uh, the clippings turned on. I'll just turn those off. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this this image here. Just want to point out if you want to get great shots like this, going to quite public places like uh, Stratford upon Avon in England, obviously the birthplace of Shakespeare. Um, to get these sort of shots where there's nobody around and, it, and it's wonderful and you get the stars in the sky in October, and I can just hit I up here and you can see I shot this at 3.44 in the morning. You've got to get up early if you want the place to yourself. So um, I have a little bit of a saying, which is uh, the world's a wonderful place when you're the only person in it. And uh, when it comes to photography, that, that certainly is the case. So 3.44 in the morning uh, to get this lovely bit of mist on the river and uh, make the shot work really well. So, yeah, just wanted to point that out to you. So anyway, we're, we're back here. We're, we're on this, this altered shot. Now, if you remember, the, the other shot that we took doesn't have any of the adjustments yet, and it's not level. Um, all we've done with that is, is added the noise reduction. So I'm going to go back to the image that we have made some alterations to. With that one highlighted, I'm going to hold down the um, command key, or control on Windows, and select the other to select this this one. So now we've got one and three. But because number one was the first one we had, and we're now effectively going selected the second one, what we can do is we can go down to the bottom here, and we can click Sync, right? And what this will do is it will synchronize everything from the first image to the second image. So you can use multiple images if you want to use the same settings and take them all the way, all the way across. So we're going to click Check All. So we've got everything that's highlighted here, and we're going to say synchronize. OK, and what it's going to do with the second drive, it's going to give us exactly the same position and the settings that we used uh, for the first one. OK, there is another way of doing this. If I come out of these for a second, if I highlight the first, the first one here, if I right click on here, what I can go is go to develop settings and I can say copy settings. Right. And the same thing, check all click copy, and then I could just select the second image that I want to correct. Um, say this one, for example, the original RAW. And I can right click again, go to develop settings, and I can say paste settings, and that will paste the settings for us, no problem at all. So these are the two images that we've got. So I'm just going to, just going to highlight that one and that one together, and I'm just going to give them a, a color so that I can see them clearly. So there they are, the two yellow ones. So what we need to do now, they are now aligned and they've got the same settings. So we now can go ahead and adjust them ready for the HDR. So this one needs to come down further in terms of its brightness. Um, so I'm just going to bring the overall brightness down slightly to this one, back to, to roughly where it was. Um, shadows I'm going to open up all the way. We're just going to check our blacks and whites again on this one because it is a bit brighter. So I'm just going to declip the whites there, as you can see. And I'm just going to add in a little bit of clip for the for the blacks. So we've got that balance back in. That's looking OK. I'll just zoom in and have a look at it render. Yeah. Now, what you will notice is as is, is the stars are actually drawn because of the um, 30 second exposure. The world keeps turning. So effectively, the stars are not perfect, whereas on the eight second image, um, as I've said, um, they're actually not drawn out too much so it actually works quite well here so we probably want to to make sure that we're working along the eight, eight second exposure and i'll show you what we're doing in in photoshop shortly to, to make sure that we achieve that 
Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, now I've got those two selected, one and three are selected. So remember to select them if you've got one, select one, hold down the control or command key on a Mac, select the other one so that we've got the two that we want. We're going to right click on them down here. We're going to go to photo merge, all right? And then we're going to go to HDR and we're going to select the HDR function. And this will uh, effectively bring the two images together. Now, at the moment, we've got the auto align ticked, which you should always have ticked if you're doing HDR to make sure that they uh, they come together the same way. You can click auto settings, but what it does is it, it, it looks at the maximum that it can achieve. So you can adjust them later if you do tick this, so it doesn't matter too much. What I'm going to do is untick that. I don't need that for now. And then you've got the, de the de-ghost amounts. Um, this is to anything that's moving at all, but we already had movement in there, so I'm not going to worry too much with that. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a stack so the two images will come together as a single image and I'm going to click merge and what it's going to do up in the, in the top left corner is it's going to create the HDR as you can see and then it will put the two images together there we go and uh, effectively we, we just have a, a single a single image you find the correct one there it is and now it's uh, enhanced noise reduction HDR so you can see that that's, that's the one that we want. Um, we're now going to do some other adjustments to this one. We're going to bring down the highlight still further all the way so that we've got that sort of nice nighttime look. We're going to open up the shadows just a little bit more to about there. Now let's have a look at the stars, see how we're doing on the stars. So they are, they are dragged out a little bit, but we can, we can adjust that in, in, in a short while. I'm just going to check the crop again, the crop angle again. I'm just going to go across there to there. Just make, make sure that's perfectly, perfectly level. So um, that's it. So that's the image that we're after. Right. So now where do we go from here? Well, one of the things I want to do is I, I, I want to tidy out where we did the HDI. You can see that the reflection over here hasn't been done particularly well. And there are some areas I would like to make a little bit brighter. And certainly the sky, I want to go with the, the, the stars that are not drawn slightly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over into Photoshop and we're going to take two images with us that we can combine together. So in fact, I'm just going to undo the stack that I did earlier. And there's stacking. So I right clicked on, on this HDR image, go to stacking and I can click unstack and it will put the other images back. So there's the image we're on, and there's the two yellow, the yellow images. And it's a good way of, of making your film strip smaller if you are doing lots and lots of uh, HDR and combining panos, etc. But uh, I'll separate them out because what I want is I want the original eight-second image, and here it is. And I also want the new HDR image. So I'm going to hold down the Command, Mac, or Control, or Windows key, and just select one and five. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to right-click and I'm going to say edit in and then rather than normally just going straight to Adobe Photoshop and I'm still using the beta version I find it uh, very useful but don't worry about that you you can use the 2024 the version it has all the functions I'm going to show you today but instead of clicking there I'm going to go down and you can say open as layers in Photoshop okay so we have the two separate layers that we can play with so we're going to click on that it's going to take us across into Photoshop and load up those two. So we've got the two layers here, Photoshop, we've got the standard no noise redu reduction layer and we've got the HDR layer. Okay, so at the moment the, the, the noise uh, reduced only layer is on top of the HDR. So if we turn the little eye off, you'll see the HDR image is behind and the other one is above it, right? But they're, they're not quite lined up perfectly, as you can see. So what we need to do is we need to align them. So you highlight both of these by holding down the shift key and clicking. So both are highlighted here. And then what we do is we go up here to, um, let me find to edit. And then we go down to auto align layers. So I'm click on auto align layers and just select auto. That's all we need and click okay. And what it will do is it will line the two images and you can see where I cropped one and the other one has still got the edge there. So we've got the two brought together. That's that's perfect, what we wanted to do. And, and now what I can do is I can recrop to this side. So I'm just going to go over to the crop tool here. 
as you can see up here look this is cropped all and i'm just going to crop back inside the, the revised area just to make sure that we've only got the area we want i'm just going to bring it up slightly from the bottom because we just had a little white corner there and hit return and now we've got the two images aligned okay remember we've got the noise reduction with the hdr underneath so you can can turn those on and off as you can see with the noise reduction only you get a longer level of reflections whereas in the hdr they're much shorter but you get much better light levels so we need to find the best of both worlds here so what what i normally do is i put the hdr image on the top so i've just grabbed it and moved it up to the top right so just unhighlight those so there's there's the noise reduction i move it up you see the blue line moves and it moves to the top so now the hdr is on the top okay and the the other image is on the bottom but they are aligned that's the important thing but i want to bring through from the from this this hdr i want to bring through the image from below so i can fill in those gaps and and sort out the sky so to do that what i do on this top layer is i add a masking layer and you'll see down at the bottom here you'll see that there's a a masking layer there and i just click it and it creates the mask layer there we go now in the mask layer and i'll select it we now get a choice of two colors okay now white conceals and black reveals so if i if i make anything on this this mask black so if i go over here and using these two little arrows you can change the color from black to white you can also press x to move them from black to white if if i have black selected I'm going to grab a brush here. You can press B to grab a brush. And I'm going to go with a brush that's um, reasonable occupancy, let's say about 60%. And I'm going to have the flow about the same, about 60%. And the smoothness, I'm going to have it really smooth, feathered edges on it. Um, now, to make the brush bigger or smaller, you can use the square brackets just to the left of the return key, or you can, you can go up into this selector here and you can choose what size that you actually want so i'm I'm, go I'm not going to have any hardness i'm going to bring that right the way down to zero as well so we've got smoothing and hardness we've got real fuzzy edges so you shouldn't be able to see the edge so i also want to make sure that the mode is on normal okay so we want uh, just mode normal selected there and uh, now we're we make sure we're selected on the layer mask so now we're painting black onto a white layer mask and that means the black will show the image that's below the next layer down so if i now dr draw on here just paint up and down you can see i can add in the extra parts of the shadow that that came from came from the image below so i'm effectively adding the image below to the hdr image on the top so i'm just painting those in you can see just painting those in just to bring them back looks looks really good with the long the long reflections in and also over here and i'll zoom in on this area over here so it's going to hold the space bar to move across you saw that we didn't get a very good reflection through the hdr process so if i paint black onto this white layer here it will bring the image that's below so the image below is this one I'll just turn the layer off and i'll switch it back on i can turn it back on so i can i can just paint that effectively over the top there and just gradually ease that back you can see just 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 taking away that sort of little bit of a um an error if you like that was being made inside the uh inside the reflection there so happy with that i've got the reflection there now we need to do the same with the sky because we don't want these drawn stars as we've already talked about so i'm going to take a slightly bigger brush but this time i'm going to take the occupancy up to 100 percent and the and the flow up to 100 percent. so now as i paint into the sky you will see that the stars from behind will appear and i'm just going to come down here look as you can see i'm just going to go along the top of the buildings there and sit around that build around the building there I'm just just going to come across there. So, so what we do is effectively painting in the sky from behind. So we're keeping all of the 
the detail that we had in the image itself. And we're just painting in this, this sort of background fiber. And because they're aligned, they actually um, line up very well with each other. So uh, let's do that again, just work our way through. I'm just gonna move this over so I can do this. So I can make my brush a little bit bigger. There we go. Into the top of the trees. And it aligns perfectly, so we don't have any worries about causing um, a halo or, or any such thing along the edge there. So there we go. Now, I did bring back the image from underneath there. Now, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to crop that little bit out on the edge there. I'm just going to bring the crop tool back over and just get rid of that little bit there. There we go. Hit return. Not quite far enough. A little bit more. So just going to... Um, Go back to the crop tool there, and we're just going to take that out just a little bit more. That's it, and I'm just going to go back to the brush B, and I'll go back into the um, mask layer there, and I just want to make sure, big brush there, that we get we get that sorted out. So using black, so I use X. So I'm just going to. Paint that back in there, there we go. And that's how you get the sky from the back image back onto the front image so that the stars are not all dragged. Um, just gonna make sure we've got all of that in there. Make a smaller brush, just run along that edge so we don't have a halo. There we go. Yep, happy with that. So let's just bring that back slightly. Now, whilst we're here in Photoshop, we do want to do a bit of tidying up, but I do want to bring these layers together now. So I want to keep it based on the visual, what we can see. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on any one of these layers down here, and I'm just going to go, um, I'll just right click on these layers down here, and then I'm going to click Merge Visible. That's what we want to do, merge visible. So now we've got a single layer with that final applied mask all together. So now there's a little bit of tidying up. I do notice under the bridges, there's some swans that are a little bit blurred and there's a couple of signs in the river. The water level was actually quite high. You can see this sign over here is uh, almost to the top here. So we're just gonna tidy these up. Now we can use the remove tool. Um, so if you just go over and select spot healing brush tool J, select the remove tool, and then we can we can just paint these out, make sure you get the reflection and any shadows that they have, and just tidy up where there's a little bit of, of noise in the background there. I'm just, just going over that a few times, just so I'm happy with that. There we go. And then this, this blurred swan, because we had a timed exposure, obviously. So I'm just going to take that out as well. Don't want to see the um, the signs on the bridges, so I'm just going to take those out. And remember to get the reflections of them in the water as well. So we're going to take these little signs out here, one of the distance there. Just tidy that up a little bit. Make the brush bigger or smaller using the um, the square brackets. Let's go over here. So this is a line in the water there. Obviously something was floating down. So I'm just going to take that out. That's good. Now there is some boats in the yard behind, but it is a little bit distracting. So I'm just going to take those out as well. Just remove those so that you get a nice dark uh, area under the bridge. Remove the signs, as I said, that's fine. Um, let's just take those off of there. This is for the um, leisure boats that come through and you can see the speed limit is a whole three miles per hour. So sense is required when riding on the River Avon. So I'm just going to take out these these uh, signs here, and then we should be pretty close to moving forward. So I just got that. I'm happy with what's under there. I'm just going to take out that bright light there. Now the little edge of the swans just just appearing there. So we'll take those out. Um, now this is a little bit distracting. This is some floating debris on the water. So we can make the the, um, the brush a little bit bigger and just go around there. And with the remove tool, you don't have to fill in. You can just do a, go all the way around the outside and it'll automatically fill it in for you. 
calculate what needs to be done and remove it. So that's nice and tidy there. Um, nothing down here. This is all good. I'm happy with the reflections. So we're good there. Now, is there anything that needs to be sorted out over here? Um, might take out that little bridge pier there rather than reducing the crop still further. So we'll just take that out. This all looks pretty nice. More than happy with this. And actually, if you notice, if you if you if you if I zoom in here, you'll see that this is Dracula. There's a, um, a theatre here where they're they're running uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. We are of course in Stratford upon Avon, so this is one of the hearts of uh, thespian life here in the United Kingdom. So there's a there's a control box on the wall there. I'm, I'm just going to take that out. I don't like control boxes and things. Just have a tidy up there. And um, same with the one above. That's it. Sign can stay. I don't know what that is on the wall, but we'll remove that. And I think we have got a pretty good tidied up image. Yeah. And being that it's been noise, the noise reduction has been applied. You know, the, the noise levels now are actually uh, very good indeed. So I'm more than happy to accept this one, I think. Yep. So I'm going to zoom back out. <coughs> and then we're going to go back. I'm going to send it back into Lightroom. So we've got just a single layer. I like to have a single layer when we, f when we finish to try to keep the file size a little bit smaller when we go back into Lightroom, because some of these TIFFs can be ginormous. Uh, can be up in the gigabyte levels if you leave all the layers there and all of the different areas. I know some people like to keep that so they have a history and they can go back and make other changes if they want to. Um, personally, I like to keep the file sizes small. I do a lot of images and uh, it soon fills up your, your hard drive. So I think we're where we need to be. So we're going to go to File. We're going to go to Close because we don't want it in Lightroom, uh, sorry, in Photoshop anymore. And then I'm going to click Save, and it's going to save it. And there we go. And I'll go back into Lightroom, and it will be back now as a TIFF. So this is this is the image all tidied up. So we have a a sort of before and after, before and after. So that's the the TIFF image that we've been working with. So now we can just do the final processing of this image and really bring it alive. So what I'm going to do first and foremost here is I'm just going to bring down the blue, so a little bit bluer. And we're just going to, to sort of balance the sky so we get nice colours on the, the trees and the buildings here. We'll reduce the saturation slightly, minus 12 there, and I will bring the vibrance up. And vibrance is, is colour contrast, so that, that always helps sort of boost, boost the colour a bit. I'm probably going to make that 10, actually. So, um, and if you can never find exactly where you want to be with these little boxes, if I'm saying 10, you can actually just click on the box and type in minus 10 and hit return and it will go straight to the number that you want. So that's that's helped with the color a little bit. I'm going to bring down the highlights just a little bit more and about minus 50 and then I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit as well about plus 50 and then I'm going to bring the exposure up. So I'm just going to bring the exposure up a little bit just to brighten up these areas. I'm going to apply a little bit of contrast about 10 there we go, that looks quite nice. And then what we're going to do is we're going to really focus on, on bringing this alive in here. Now, one of the new tools that we have with Lightroom is the point color function. And what I've found having a play with it is that it's really good for looking at areas where you have light and you want to increase light based on color. And I'll give you an example of that. So if I go into point color here, which I am, and I take the, the eyedropper here, I select that, I can now pick a color from anywhere I want to use. So let's pick this green, for example. We want to sort of boost the greens around this area. So if I select the green here, you'll see it's picked the, the green up here. Now you have the range slider, so I can make the range smaller or I can make the, the range larger. In this case, I want to make the range quite large because I want all the greens in this area to, to be brighter. So you've got the hue, so you can shift it from orange to more green. You've got the saturation, how much color you want, and you've got the lum luminosity of the shift, so effectively how bright it is. And if I move the luminosity to the right, you will see that the greens, and only the greens here, are boosted. They're also boosted over there in the distance. If I'd selected a much more narrower range, it would have only 
illuminated the very color that I selected. And you see around this line, if I move the range all the way down, you'll see that it picks up all of those greens around that area. So we can boost the greens there. What I'm going to do, I want to also boost this sort of orangey color up here. But of course, that's similar colors to the buildings and the bridges. So I'm going to go back to the eyedropper and I'm going to select up here in the, the trees here. I'm going to select that, that orange. It needs to be it needs to be lighter. If you pick a too dark an area, it doesn't it doesn't really like it. So I'm going to pick a lighter area up here. There we go. And what you'll notice is, is that it's created a second swatch. First swatch was the one that we had for the greens, and this one is the new swatch, which is really picking up on those areas. So here I can again bring up the brightness here on, and picking up on all of those similar tones. Now you have to be careful because if you go too bright, there's a big difference in color between the blues and the oranges here in the water. And if I raise that too much, you'll end up with very distinctive lines. So you have to be very careful with, with how, you, how you use this. So I'm just going to move it ever so slightly. I'm going to increase, increase the range so that we have a little bit of bleed over. I'm just going to raise that ever so gently there just to brighten up that tree there. You can see that's working quite well. I'm going to take another eyedropper here and I'm going to take the orange of the building. You can see the orange there. Um, and I can I can do the same thing. I can shift the color more towards the red if I want to. Looks terrible. Um, by the way, if you ever want to return any of these to the center to zero, just double click on the word and it will take you back to the center. In fact, what I want to do is make a little bit more orange, not a lot, just a little bit, which I've done there. And I actually want to make it slightly darker. So I can use the luminance there, a little bit darker. It's probably still a bit too orange. There we go. So you can adjust those colors individually. Now this blue in the water, select the eyedropper, pick the blue in the water. I want to desaturate this slightly. It's a bit too much. I know the sky is very blue, but let, let's look at desaturation ever so slightly. So we just bring that back a little bit, and that will also bring the sky back just a little bit as well. Um, and we can probably even maybe just alter the luminosity a little bit there. And I'm going to increase the range as well. So, so we've got that sort of color balance going on. So I think that's starting to look, look quite nice and um, very powerful tool, this point color, being able to look at different, different colors specifically. Um, I'll give you one more example here. This, this light over here is very blue. You see this blue light here. What we can do is take the eyedropper. We can come in on this sort of very bright blue here. As you can see, it's picked the color there. And we can, we can actually... Um, shift it more towards the purple, or more towards the blue by, by using the hue shift, or we can desaturate slightly to take that blueness away. Can you see I've moved that back to a white? Can you see that's white? If I set that back to where it was, you can see it's very blue, which doesn't look so good. So I'm just going to desaturate that slightly and just back off the brightness ever so slightly there. And that, that's working very, very well. Okay, so that's that's the point color. Works works tremendously well. So just to finish this image off, I'm going to go into masks, and I want to sort of light up some of these areas a little bit more. I want to emphasize the mist over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a radial gradient. I'm going to pull out a radial gradient across the water here, as you can see, and then I'm just going to bring up the exposure slightly, not a lot, just a little bit, about 0.18 there, and then I'm going to go down to dehaze. Okay. Now, dehaze is normally used to remove haze, but you can also add more mist or haze with this. So if I move this to the left, you can see I can increase the amount of mist that's on the water here. So, you know, right the way up to the maximum, make it really look quite misty. Now, I'm going to go probably around about 75 just to mist that in. But what we can also do now we've got this, this actually, this radial gradient in position, I can add a brush, okay? Now, adding the brush, I can select feather at 100% and flow relatively low, about 40%. And now I have a brush that's based on the settings that we have in here. So I can just go over here and add in a little bit more mist coming away. There we go, just a little bit more mist coming away over there. So get the brush a little bit bigger and just brush that mist in. There we go. So you've got a bit more mist on the, on, on the water there. Now, if, if I went too far, I can hold down the optional alt key and make it a minus. So I can then take that out from where I put it as well. If I don't want too much coming in there, let's just bring that back a little bit from there. There we go. So you can see we've got that sort of mist, it, mist on the water. And that, that's a really, really good way of, of, of adding mist. 
I think what I also want to do is just brighten up these trees a little bit. So I'm going to go to uh, create a new mask. I'm going to select another radial. This time I'm going to select quite a big radial to come in further over this way. And I'm going to brighten those trees up. And as you can see, it picked up on this lamp here. I add a bit of contrast so this lamp's not too bright. Bring down the highlights slightly so again the, the lamp's not too bright. And I just want to pop in a bit more orange. There we go on the temp slider. I'll just move that up just to make that a little bit more orange over there. But I don't want to light the sky up. You can see the edges here are lighting the sky up. So what I can do is subtract the sky from this mask. And it will sub there we go, you saw it disappear. And that, that just means that the sky stays the same color. So we've got some nice brightness over here now. Um, and I think we're starting to look pretty good. I think the edge of this tree I'd like to light up a little bit more. So we can take another, create mask, another radial gradient, and we can bring a little radial gradient in over here, just on the face of these trees. I'm just going to turn that slightly like that. And then I'm just going to bring up the exposure ever so, ever so gently, just to brighten that with some contrast. There we go, and that's looking quite nice. Maybe we could add in a bit more colour, so saturate that just a little bit more. So we just added a little bit of saturation there. So I think we're pretty close to, to finishing this image off. Um, I'm not too happy about the, the edge of the, the tree up in the top right corner. Um, so we can try to remove that using the Hill tool, and we can select um, the content aware for the Hill tool, and I can take a slightly bigger brush here. I can just paint that out and then hopefully the heel tool can deal with that not too bad a little bit left there just to take that out as well yep works reasonably well so heel, the heel tool is nothing like as good as the remove tool in uh, photoshop but it, it it does have its use in, in lightroom and it can be it can be quite useful just to get where you want to be so i'm happy with that okay so I think just to finish this image off, we need a bit of clarity in here. We need a little bit of clarity here. So what I'm going to do is going to go back into mask and create a new mask. And I'm going to select a brush. Okay, this brush is going to have 100% feather, 40% flow, so it's got light flow. And then I'm going to go down and select clarity. I'm going to give it a whole handful of clarity, 40, and a little bit of texture, about four or five. Texture is very powerful. You have to be very careful. And then I'm just going to wash across. This this area here, well, a little bit on that there, up on these trees. Pick up the bridge. There we go. Just just make sure that bridge is, and the clarity for that bridge is looking really good. So that's really sharp. And you know what? I might even add a little bit of sharpness in whilst I'm still in that brush. So bear in mind that's the mask that we've just laid down. Just going to go down to sharpness and add a little bit of sharpness in there as well. There we go. So that's really picked that up. That's working very very well. Now I think the crop needs to be a little bit tighter, so I'm going to go back into the crop tool. I'm going to select the original where you say custom and select 16.9. I think that's going to work better, more of a pano, uh, a panorama. There we go. And is that fully centre? I think bring that down just a little bit, and I'm going to select that. Yeah, I think we just need to darken the sky off at the top and down here. Now we can either do that with linear gradient. Or we can put in a post crop vignette and we can go down to effects down here at the bottom and we can move the slider over just to bring the corners in a little bit darker. Now I've gone for minus 30 there on the post crop vignette, it's a bit much. So rather than backing that off, what you can do is go to the feather slider and just move the feather slider back and you get a nice even edge. I'm going to bring that back to about 20. That works, that works very well. Um, I think the sky still needs to be a little bit darker, so I'm just going to go back into the masks. I'm going to select a linear gradient, and I'm just going to bring a linear gradient in from that side. Back that rather way up to the top there. And I'm just going to take a little tiny bit out of that with the exposure. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that, I have to say. Go back out of masks. I'm just going to apply a little bit more sharpening to the whole image just so it really pops. And I'm going to say that's done. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's more, more of a sort of traditional photograph, taking the challenges of, of having very high contrast with streetlights and, 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 and dark skies uh, and trying to keep 
the uh, trying to keep the 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 sky, you know, not having the stars all drawn out and trying to find the right reflections. It's always important. Um, if I just take you back to the original shot, here we go. That's where we started. Yeah, and uh, there we are. That's the that's the TIFF image that we've ended up with. So it's quite a, quite a big difference there. Yeah, really nice image. So if you enjoyed the video, then please click like down below and I always enjoy reading your comments and your questions and tips that you may have. So please feel free to put those down below. If you haven't already subscribed, it would be great for you to join my adventure here on YouTube. And uh, for now, until the next video, I'm going to say bye-bye.